Let's say when I'm like in the toilet, then I'll like, I'll try to look up and like be aware of like, oh, is there someone like, some hidden camera or someone looking from on top? In the written reply after January's parliament sitting, Minister for Education Lawrence Wong said that between 2015 and 2019, there were 205 disciplinary cases related to sexual misconduct. These were all in pre-university institutions and institutes of higher learning. We went to campuses around Singapore to find out how students feel about these recurring incidents. Have you heard about the sexual assault cases around campuses in Singapore? Yes, we have. Yep, definitely. Uh, yes, actually the one that I think that had most attention from the public was the one that happened to like Monica Bay. What are your thoughts about these cases? I think that mostly it's very um, disturbing. I definitely feel a bit angered and enraged especially and worried for my friends who live on campus. A simple act of showering has become something that is a cause of concern. It's kind of sad. <laughs> like I feel like it's really kind of sad. And also because it made me like look into more of like how like girls also feel about this kind of stuff. I think it's something that's very real and very big and like I think it's also hidden until like now recently maybe because of like the most biggest uh, case with uh, Monica then I think that's why like now a lot of people are getting attention and then like we're looking at it more. Have you personally witnessed any cases of sexual misconduct? Uh, for myself yes, uh, my friend recently, uh, not recently, uh, maybe a few years back like she got uh, inappropriately touched by a stranger in the bus and she was in her school uniform. I'm not so close with her, but I know it took a like, personal toll on, on her mental health. And I, I know the outcome wasn't desirable for her. How do you react in that situation? I was shocked, honestly, because in a school uniform, like who would have guessed, guessed that? She was 15. I, I guess it's, it's just not fair. The fact that the outcome wasn't, the person wasn't like um, caught, uh, really like, it's, it's very heartbreaking, I would say, yeah. I experienced it before and I almost witnessed it, like, um, almost because, like, there was this um, person trying to um, take a photo, an upskirt photo, but, like, I kept, like, staring at the person until, like, it didn't happen because I think the person got scared. For myself, um, experience, like, someone lifting my shorts on an escalator. So after that, like, I was very, like, self-conscious of, like, um, wearing, like, having shorts, like, while I'm on an escalator. I feel a bit scared after all these cases happen. Ever since that happened, like, I'll be very like self-conscious and like, aware or like, let's say when I'm like, in the toilet, then I'll, like, I'll try to look up and like, be aware of like, oh, is there someone like, some hidden camera or someone looking from on top, that kind of thing. And I think like, this kind of like, changes in behaviour, is, it's a bit unfortunate, especially for like, people who have re already been there before. What do you think are some possible challenges faced by victims? Victim blaming. <laughs> that's that's, that's the, the one thing that uh, I think they would feel like. And it's something that like people subconsciously do, so I realise. When they say like, oh, you shouldn't be wearing this, or you shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't have like, you know, let something be left there or like be. Yeah, then like in a way they feel like, oh, in the end it's their fault. But actually in the end, like, it is actually the perpetrators, like, um, like, what they did to them, uh, that, is, that is not right. Uh. There's definitely a stigma in society that, um, you know, if you're a victim of sexual assault, then, oh, maybe these people talk about me and those people talk about me. So, uh, you know, as if I were a victim, uh, if I were like a victim, then I wouldn't want to, I, I, I would hesitate to step out. Yeah, but so I think this is like a societal, societal thing that has to, you know, uh, change. I think it not only applies to girls, but also for guys to also be able to step up even though like, they may be seen as what society think weak, but I feel that it's also a way that they can empower other people to step up. I think the challenge is creating the anonymity for um, the, the, the people who get assaulted to come forward about it and to make sure that this anon anonymity is very securely um, protected. I think some possible challenges is really getting through the experience. So when I read the Monica Bay um, article, one reason why she really was like fighting so hard for like a harsher punishment because she was saying that she really wasn't able to sleep well, lost appetite and she wasn't able to like just function properly. Because I think more often than not, even if like the punishment is is harsh, like a jail term or whatnot, but I think after all like it's how the person even perceive herself, right? She might question herself, oh, is it the way I dress? Or is it the way I, I interacted with people? Like, gave people this impression that I'm a very easygoing person or, like, someone that, you know, I can just, like, mess around with without having to deal with, like, those legal implications. On top of that, maybe even, um, like, the public attention, like, maybe friends around them or just acquaintances, they have to, like, deal with, I don't know, like, 
weird eyes from them. It's definitely something not easy for them to like go through. Especially if they like ever see the person again, I think it's just a reminder or ever like read about news, things like that. It's just a constant reminder of what happened to them. It's like something very hard for them to like, to really get out of it, I feel. What more do you think can be done to make campuses safer for students? It's a tough question, to be honest, because like what I mentioned earlier, like we, we can't really control how a person acts. But I guess having more to be more transparent with students on what's going on and like getting the feedback from students on like, hey, what can we do better? Because I'm very sure like the school themselves, they don't know, they don't want to step on anyone's toes or they themselves don't know what to do. But I guess it will be, it'll be great to like get the thoughts from students themselves on like what we can do better as a, as a school. When they do occur, I, I do feel like the penalties could be a bit harsher. Sometimes it seems like the punishment is not befitting of the crime. Uh, I can't comment on that legally, but that's people's opinions, right? Personally, what I feel is that the government likes to do things like uh, enact harsh penalties to, to, to establish deterrence. We do that for drugs and we do that for uh, some other offences. So I, I, I do think you could look into that here. I think like, as a goal, of course, like, when I hear something like that, I will really like, empathise with like, Monica Bay because I think that you know, the person should have been given like, a harsher punishment. But at the same time, I think like, from a public point of view, um, it's a bit difficult to be objective about it. Okay, because I study law, so I feel that actually there are a lot of factors that have been taken into consideration, like when melting out of punishment. So I think what the court took into consideration is that the person has like, quite a clean record and also like a possibility of like being reformed and becoming a better person. After all, we are all humans and we make mistakes. Not, not to trivialize like, what has happened, but really like we need to really think clearly whether this is really the best punishment for the person and I try to be objective about it. Yeah, I think it's just that the conversation shouldn't be out of the limelight. You know, we continue to talk about it. Uh, we give people, the, we give victims the confidence to step up as well as educate people about, uh, you know, respect and consent that the university is already doing. Uh, it's good to instill these values in everyone. And then when that's, and then when that takes place, I think a major societal change can take place also. People who are victims can step up and in the first place, people won't even, will know not to commit these crimes in the first place. I can't speak for the management of NTU. Uh, I don't have the oversight that they do and the information. But I think that communities are built from the ground up and the individual actions do matter. So as an individual, just be careful and hear what people have to say, especially potential victims that you might know because you never know what has happened to people. Yeah. In December, NUS announced that it would step up measures to tackle incidents of sexual misconduct. These measures include expanding the scope of the victim care unit, issuing reports every six months on sexual misconduct cases, and speedier police reporting for arrestable offences. Similarly, both NTU and SMU also have a dedicated unit to support survivors and mandatory courses for students to teach them about respect and consent. But beyond these measures, students we spoke to said that it's also important to engage in discourse about the issue. They said that this is necessary to confront certain entrenched norms and educate people about accountability and responsibility. One thing's for sure, it is a complex issue, but these conversations provide an encouraging start.